one of the things that uh, you get a benefit of when you live by yourself is the freedom of self-expression and all the men understand what I just said when you live with other people or you live like in your parents house there is no freedom of self-expression you got to be mindful of everybody else or anybody else in that house me and my wife have had the privilege of having people live with us for the past six years um, constantly from one person to four sometimes up to five sometimes I, I come into the house and it will feel like a hotel than a house it's like who's here today <laughs> oh you're the new person okay nice to meet you too and so um we love when people visit but it's a little bit better when they stay you get a chance to see their character and they get a chance to see yours and to really affect your character but one of the things that from an experience of having people live with us and we have people live with us now is that one of the things that you have to be mindful that the other person is in the house as a guy because what we love as brothers is we love the ability to be comfortable and sometimes you know walking around and um yeah and uh and stuff and so and then <laughs> when you have another person living in the house <laughs> you know my wife always says hey you can't go there like this you know like it's my house yes it's yours but there's someone else here when you live by yourself you can do whatever you want as a Christian you have to understand that you have someone living in you and whatever you do you got to be sensitive that there's someone else therefore you can't do what you would typically do if you wouldn't be a Christian because he who lives in you is he who raised Christ from the dead and this spirit the spirit of the living God he is called Holy Spirit that means all the nakedness all the craziness we got to have a little check mark in our life because of the Holy Spirit that lives in us the Holy Spirit took residence in you as a Christian see God was always looking for habitation when Jesus came on this earth he was looking for a womb to be conceived in then he was looking for a place to be born in and then he was looking for a place to be buried in and today the spirit of the living God is looking for a place not just to visit on the weekends but to inhabit during the weekdays to live in the Bible says you are the temple of the Holy Spirit it tells us that you are not just having the Holy Ghost as a guest you're not a restaurant where he comes to eat you're a house where he comes to stay and so the series that we are gonna start this month will be called host the Holy Ghost I encourage you if you got some other ghosts running in your house get this thing long sleeve t-shirt over there in the thing come in your house and say I got another ghost he lives inside of me it is the Holy Ghost every other ghost has to go because the Holy Ghost lives inside of me come on somebody amen amen I, I had a person come to me after the first service say Vlad I'm going to this particular meeting and has like a lot of weird stuff she's like I'm putting this on so that the Holy Spirit will come in I prayed with her and I said, hey Amen. I agree with you in Jesus name, in Jesus name. We will take a story from the Old Testament of book of Joshua chapter 6 and verse 25. And Joshua spared Rahab the harlot, her father's household and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel till this day because, because I want you to see why Rahab was spared her father's house so not only her family but her father's like the whole family tree and everything she had all the money she acquired all of her investments all of her bank accounts all of her possessions was spared so she was spared her family tree was spared and her possessions was spared and the bible gives us a secret and she dwells in the house of, of israel because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho your life can change because of what you're hiding what are you hiding right now 
See, Rahab was hiding something and because of that her family, her finances, her own life and now she lives in Israel and if we read the Bible we see that she becomes a great ancestor of the lineage of David and she's actually carrying a royal blood now because Jesus came through Rahab's family. She was formerly a prostitute. Why did this great change happen? Because she hid something but if we go to chapter 7 which is the next chapter we see a contrast someone who wasn't a prostitute someone who wasn't living in Jericho someone whose life wasn't being condemned to destruction Achan actually was in line for promotion in line for destiny in line for promise but I want us to see this but the children of Israel committed a trespass regarding the accursed things for Achan the son of Khomri, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed things. So the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. And if you read a little bit further, you see that not only he took those things, but he hid it under his tent. So we see two people who are playing hide, who are hiding things. One is a prostitute. But because she's hiding spies, her life is dramatically changed. Another one is a soldier who has a facade that he's fighting for God. But secretly he is hiding forbidden things. And then we see it a little bit later in chapter 7 where his family was brought on a pedestal. And he brought those hidden things but it was too late. And the whole family including his livestock, including his possessions was stoned. And a big heap of stones was made in the memory of his problem. Not of his success but of his problem. Every person is hiding something and within five years of your life what you're hiding right now will drastically change your health, your finances and your reputation. For example, practically, if right now you're studying in a university, nobody sees that. Nobody knows the fact that you don't spend evenings re-watching Stranger Things season two. You're there like literally devouring that book. In three, four years you'll be driving a different car because you'll be getting a different paycheck. You'll be having a different job. Maybe you are today secretly going to sleep because of what's going through you. You're going to sleep drinking yourself to sleep. Nobody sees that. Tomorrow you're not only drinking at home, you're drinking with your buddies at the club. Within three to five years you will have a DUI. You will have a problem with your job. You will have a problem with every relationship you touch and if you have a girlfriend she will leave you and if you have a wife she will separate from you and your life will be devastated because what you're hiding today can change you tomorrow and it will change your destiny in five years. You know it's a personal testimony of mine too because when we came to the United States at the age of 13 my family immigrated here and when I was given the opportunity and the responsibility to begin to preach and all of this stuff one of the things that I started to separate myself from is that when other people would do other things I would try to wake up earlier at 5, 5.30 and before going to a sophomore school, sophomore in high school in Pasco High or senior in Pasco High, I would spend an hour, an hour and a half in prayer here. The crazy part is nobody saw that. Nobody cared about that. The only people who knew is few people who had the keys to the church and somebody that would come in and this happened years after years after years. Our ministry wasn't changing. I preached the same way I preached at that time. I had a lot of passion but it wasn't meaning much. When in about six or five years ago when the Lord started to open doors and, and God started to bring, I could see God's favor on my life and some people come and they say Vlad you know what's happening to you but I always tell them this. What you do in secret, the Father who lives in secret will always reward publicly. Whether it's prayer or drugs, He will reward what's done in secret. You determine 
what you want to show up in the public platter of your future but God says there is a law I live in secret I live in private and I will reward publicly come on somebody that's why we believe in fasting that's why we believe in praying that's why we believe in giving because when we do in secret God sees in secret and he rewards us publicly if you want to change what's showing up publicly change what you're giving privately change what God is seeing in private you know when I was when we were in Ukraine we had this um Thing where relatives would come it's not like now where you know people don't really kind of visit people's houses in, in Ukraine it was like an everyday thing and so my parents would tell us I'm oldest of five and say um, auntie so and so is coming with her kids clean up the house because the house was very dirty because we were we were playing church deacons meetings we did communions in the house we did a lot of stuff and it was messy and so mom would come and say 30 minutes they're coming in 30 minutes clean up the house why are you not cleaning the house and we kept messing around with the house and everything and then it was five minutes clean the house now and so you have five minutes you don't have time to fold everything so what we did is we took everything that we saw and we shoved it under the couches we put all of it under the bed put it all the way behind the couch so the house looked so clean because the guests would never look behind the couches and under the bed. See when you come to church many times religion tells you clean up your life. Get rid of the tattoos, get rid of that, get rid of that and the quick quick fixes usually shelves our inner world with all the problems where God actually lives. You look presentable to the religious community but in reality you're full of mess. So the goal in our church is not so you have behavior modification but so do you have heart transformation because that is where God lives. God lives behind the couch. Whatever we throw stuff into the areas we ignore because nobody sees these are the areas where the Holy Spirit lives and God wants us to pay attention to those areas because these are the areas he's going to use to reward us in public somebody say amen somebody say amen and so I want you to see that Rahab and Achan there's a difference between them because Rahab she hid the spies Achan hid the clothes Rahab she was saved Achan was destroyed Rahab wanted to be like Israel she kept collecting stories about her God Achan wanted to be like Jericho there are people that sit in churches but they dream of nightclubs and there are people that are in nightclubs they dream of churches you will always be where you dream at your butt might be sitting on that pew but if your heart is in the club it will drag you out of the church but there are some people who are here today because when they were strung out on doing the things something inside of them says I want that I want that amen our message will have two points today the first point is, is a form of a question what are you hiding what are you hiding for Achan he was hiding something that God says it doesn't belong to them I want you to know a few things about sin before we talk about the Holy Spirit's presence in our life I want us to talk about sin in our life because many times sin it hinders the flow of the Holy Spirit even David says he, he said who can ascend the hill of the Lord who can stand in your holy presence he said he who has clean hands and pure heart and he who has not sworn unto iniquity meaning if you really want God not just to visit you but to stay in you your house got to be presentable have you been to places or visited some friends maybe who um, especially like college students or single people who don't really care about maybe things looking good or smelling good and sometimes you walk in and I remember visiting um, one, one person a uh, long 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 time ago like maybe 10 years ago and I walked in and there's like these piles of clothing like food to the dogs and to the cats everywhere dishes are not washed and you walk in and the stench is so and I was he came to church and we, we were hanging out and I visited his house and I was like my god but you know you, you politely is you know say wow this is such a nice place the spirit like I feel freedom in this house I, I sense that you really like you love your liberty and uh, like you really love like collecting things and so and I'm like speaking all the positive but inside I'm like uh, if I would never ever live here 
I wonder if Holy Spirit comes on Sunday during the come Holy Spirit song and he's like man you're awesome you're made in the image and likeness of God you're fearful and wonderful and made but I'm not staying here with you you're crazy <laughs> the way you talk to your mama the way the, what the stuff that you do in your spare time you are nuts is the heart condition is how you live your life pleasant for the Holy Spirit to stay or you're only comfortable with him visiting the problem with sin is that sin grows in the dark sin is sneaky and secretive even if you remember to when you were sinning not like yesterday but like you know like way before you came to church or you came to God one of the things that always each sinner had to do is they had to learn how to cover their tracks you know when you go to the store look for the cameras make sure nobody's watching you know you constantly constantly want to hide it protect it so that nobody can see it it started with Adam when Adam sinned he didn't come up and say hey God naked uh, ate the tree the smell tasted really good but God feel really bad about it no the first thing there's that proclivity when you get sin you right away play tricks you right away hide you conceal you only show what could make you look good and the things that embarrass you you protect and you hide because that is the power of sin it conceals you you, you want to conceal it but the problem is the sin grows in the dark in darkness is where devil operates demons operate in the darkness and the holy spirit only walks in the light lives in the light amen i want you to notice the second thing about sin is that your present or your recent victory is not god's approval on your life with achan see when he was hiding those things under his stand Achan was actually feeling confident about his sin because they won a battle with Jericho. Deception of sin is this. When you get promoted at your job, you somehow think God is okay with the fact I'm not faithful at church. I'm not faithful to my wife. God is okay with the fact that I'm not spending time with his word. I'm not giving him my time, my finances. God is okay. Why? Because look, my boss gave me a supervisor position. God is okay. Why? Because look, I got a bonus. Look, things are still working out. Things are still good. See, your recent victory is not a proof God is on your side. Because every mobster, every drug dealer, every pimp, then is pleased with God riches and wealth houses and prosperity a winning record is not a sign that God is on your side we always examine our success in the light of God's word we examine our life in the light of God's word we examine our heart in the light of God's word and let me just give you a little tip if you're sinning you will never continue on winning you might be winning right now but sooner or later sin is a killer sin is a cancer every person who knows cancer they know one thing i can still be working i can still be normal but i have a killer in my body and sooner or later this thing is not going to be content of just staying in my body it wants to kill me when you're winning at life and you got a cancer spreading inside of your private life listen that thing wants to stop your winning that's why you got to get rid of the cancer so you can keep on winning in life come on somebody amen you know samson samson was still winning the battles samson was still ripping off the gates ripping off the lions samson was still taking a jaw of a dry a jaw of a donkey and hitting people and winning and he felt invincible sleeping with the hookers sleeping with the prostitutes living very immoral life eating from the things that he should have never been eating touching the dead which was his nazarite vow not to do doing all of that stuff but see when you are doing good you're like god is cool with me look all of y'all praying fasting you're do doing worse than me rewards don't come speedily nor is punishment and the reason why God doesn't reward right away is to test our patient and the reason why God doesn't allow punishment to fall right away to allow you to come to your senses and repent 
before you get suspended, before you end up in jail, before you get separated, before you lose your license, before you lose your marriage and before you lose your life. This message is not to guilt trip anybody because the Aiken in the Bible is me. The Aiken is you. We all have certain things that we like to keep it hidden. We all have certain things we don't want nobody to find out. We all have certain things that we hide sometimes from God, even from ourselves. And the message today is not to say, oh, if you have hiding things in your life, God is going to punish you. The message is this, don't hide it, deal with it. Bring it up. Find a counselor. Find a group that you need to go. Find help. Find a book, a podcast. Find some kind of a thing that helps you to deal with whatever you are hiding. Don't think time will fix it. Don't punish yourself for what you've done or what you're hiding. Deal with it. Ask Judas. Judas will tell you punishing yourself for your bad things will never help you get better. It will never help you get better. If punishing you would have been the solution, Jesus would never be punished for you. He would have let you have the punishment. Only Jesus' punishment is what's going to fix our problem and our issue, not our self-inflicted wounds. Amen. Amen. The second thing that we see is, who are you hosting? Achan was hiding sin and it was really bad for him but Rahab she was hosting the spies and I always like to say that two spies that she was hosting and these two spies let me give you the name for these two spies it's bible reading and praying these two spies you need to be hiding in your life and hosting in your life it's interesting that when she started to host them I want you to write this down about the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit comes to live in us by the invitation of salvation is the Holy Spirit comes when Jesus comes. When Jesus comes to live inside of your heart, He comes with the Holy Spirit. He comes with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes by invitation of salvation. And the reason why Holy Spirit comes because of salvation is because unless you're saved, meaning unless your sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ, and unless you give your life to the Lord, the Holy Spirit cannot live in you because the Bible says our heart is dead our spirit is dead and whenever it's dead it's like a tomb and Jesus says of Pharisees he says you guys are whitewashed tombed tombs meaning some people when they try to do good things you know give to charity and do other stuff but if Jesus is not the savior of your life you're really washing your tomb the Holy Spirit is not gonna live in a tomb he only lives in the temple and the temple is someone who gives their life to Jesus Christ and that's why today if you're coming today maybe for the first time or maybe you've been coming for some time and you're a religious person most likely you are you know that there is God and probably you listen to Caleb once in a while and you feel God around you in your car you're crying tears because the Spirit of God is around your neighborhood but for him to take residence inside of you you have to come off of your high horse that you can achieve salvation on your own accept Jesus let him wash you and turn your tomb into a temple Come on somebody, let's give the Lord a round of applause. Amen. Unless Jesus Christ is your Savior, the Spirit has no resting place in your heart. Number two is we host the Holy Ghost by surrendering. When we surrender, when we yield, because see you can have the Holy Spirit in your life but not surrender to the Holy Spirit. Let me give you an example. Each person in here has a flesh. Flesh is the devil part of you that always wants to do bad. That you don't have to teach it. It's that like the child you know always wants to do bad. That the flesh is the devil's gift on your birthday. That's what flesh is. Now how many of you know that you have the same flesh as Hitler? You have the same flesh as the Al-Qaeda and, and all these terrorists. Same flesh. What's the difference between you and them? you don't yield to your flesh as they do and because you don't yield to your flesh you don't do stupid and because they yield to their flesh a hundred percent they do crazy stuff the same way is with the Holy Spirit all the Christians have the same Holy Spirit but not all the Christians yield to the Holy Spirit the same some Christians only yield to the Holy Spirit a little bit and some Christians yield to the Holy Spirit a little bit more. Some Christians yield to the Holy Spirit like this and some they just surrender completely and say Lord not I but you that lives inside of me. And then the Holy Ghost takes over. 
Come on somebody. It's either going to be flesh or the Holy Spirit. If you think you're going to be in control of your life, think again. It's going to be either flesh or the Holy Spirit. And the question is, who do you surrender to? One of the reasons we don't host and we don't surrender to the Holy Spirit, guys, is this one. One is condemnation. A lot of times when we make a mistake in our Christian life, we let condemnation drive us away from the Holy Spirit. Condemnation is saying that I'm not good enough. I'm inconsistent. I start and I quit. I can't focus my thoughts during prayer. You know what? My Bible reading app has not been open the last three days. I lost that streak. <laughs> Some of you who read the version Bible app. It's such, a, such an important Bible app. I think every person used to do a Bible reading plan there because like it motivates you. Whenever you don't want to read the Bible, at least you're motivated not to lose the streak. <laughs> Lord, reveal this deep truth to your servants right now. Amen. <laughs> condemnation is something that you have to overcome to last with the Holy Spirit and condemnation is this is that when you make a mistake big or small that God is the first one to know not the last one you always beat the devil to God when you make a mistake you can't run to God walk to him you can't walk to God crawl to God if you can't crawl call Glenn Ivan, Malachi, call somebody and say come and drag me out to God because I can't stay here. I can't stay in condemnation. I can't stay in this sin. I can't stay in self-pity. Amen. You will say what if I come to church and, and I just fall asleep on the morning prayer. Do you ever get mad at your kids because they fall asleep in your arms? Nor does God. God's presence is a priority. Amen. The second reason why many times we don't host the Holy Spirit is because of emotional immaturity. Emotional immaturity, especially for new believers who will live by their passion, who live by their emotion instead of their devotion to God. And their marriages will fail like that and their job commitments fail because when they're excited for something they're committed to it and when they lose the excitement they don't know how to live on commitment the bible says walk in the holy spirit the bible doesn't say to live in a feeling of the holy spirit holy spirit is someone you can feel but there are days times months maybe even a year where you might not feel his presence that does not mean he's not there this week we had a time where the sun was covered with clouds for a few days but the sun did not pack its bags and disappear from our galaxy because the clouds came See, just because your emotions are down and it's down for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and things are just not going so well, it doesn't mean you cancel the appointment with the Holy Spirit and say, well, He left me. He doesn't leave you. Well, I don't feel like He's speaking to me. Have you noticed that during a test, every time a teacher is silent? It doesn't mean the teacher is gone. It's because you're taking a test. She's still there. Holy Spirit is still there. Don't rely on your emotions. Rely on the Holy Scriptures when you don't feel the Holy Spirit because He wrote the Holy Scriptures. My God my God when Jesus went to the wilderness he quoted the scriptures he felt the spirit he saw the spirit come at the Jordan but sometimes after those great experiences you hit a wilderness and the devils and the wild beasts are attacking you and you say where is God he is in the holy scriptures because he authored the holy scriptures somebody say amen don't be an emotional driven person. Be a person who controls their emotions, doesn't let their emotions control them. Otherwise the devil will use your emotional immaturity to knock you out from the continuous fellowship with the Holy Spirit, continuous attendance of the local church, continuous commitment to your family and to your job. Because emotionally unstable people are not good at anything. If you have a job, if you have, if you're a boss, you know one thing about emotional people. They're very hard, they're very bad employees. If you're married to the emotional roller coaster, literally it's very difficult. We all have emotions, but emotions shouldn't have us. Amen. Number three, what affects our fellowship with the Holy Spirit is busyness. It's the Martha syndrome where you invite Jesus, but you don't have time for Jesus. Martha syndrome is is we don't have time we slept in I, I don't have time for the Lord but you know what I, I, I gotta go to the gym what if you tell the gym I don't have time for you because I'm spending time with the Lord I can't miss gym no you can't miss time with God you can't miss time with God you know I'm trying to go as faithful to the gym as I can but my commitment is not to the gym my commitment is to healthy living and my commitment is to the Holy Spirit 
and if I miss gym one time or sometimes you know like because I have my time what I spend with the Lord but usually the time where the Holy Spirit touches me is outside of my time and the problem with my time is that I'm so committed to my time that I don't want to spend an extra minute and sometimes I have this leading with the Holy Spirit like well spend extra time and I say Holy Spirit you don't understand I, I gotta work on my abs today I mean I gotta work on my back I gotta work on my arms and he says I know you do but he says you feel my presence linger a little bit longer and when you linger a little bit longer many times it's almost like you prayed for those 30 minutes you prayed for that hour and you just don't feel it but you gotta leave like at your seven or six or whatever the time you gotta leave that and then you spend a little bit longer and that's when actually God is there Samuel came when Saul left God chooses sometimes to come when you're about to pack bags and you say I'm done to another thing what if the another thing can wait I'm not saying to do that every day I'm not saying to be irresponsible with your schedule but I'm saying be flexible with your schedule so that you're committed to know the Holy Spirit and to get touched by the Holy Ghost hallelujah hallelujah and the last thing is laziness laziness is when we we forsake the Holy Spirit I believe this is one of the biggest things is because we are just really lazy lazy we just say I, I don't feel like doing I don't want to do it it's just not me and all of this stuff and laziness is a disease and it needs to be conquered and it needs to be overcome it's okay to fall into laziness what's bad is when you live in laziness constantly laziness will make you poor laziness will make you a person that will fall out of love with your spouse laziness will be a person that will something that will make you lose your promotion but most importantly laziness will drive you away from the fellowship of the Holy Spirit many of our problems is not demons it's just flesh and laziness and the devil uses that the demons use that so they can keep us away from the Holy Spirit kick laziness in the curve give it an eviction note kick it outside and simply say you're gonna freeze to death and I will burn with the fire of the Holy Ghost can somebody say amen hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> guys we have morning prayers here Monday to Friday at five o'clock I ask you that this week you win the battle with the blankets and you make time with the Holy Spirit I ask you that this week you take time to pick up your Bible and spend time with the Holy Spirit I ask you this week that maybe you push away the TV and the Netflix and you you open some sermons and you open some testimonies and you fill yourself with the Holy Spirit I ask you this week that instead of saying oh I'm so busy I come to church once a month that you, you take time not only to come to church this Sunday but that you take time to actually attend a small group this week because when you fellowship with other believers the fire of God touches you you know I start fire in my house almost every, almost every single day in the fireplace and I can tell you a little secret the more dry wood you put together the easier it is to start fire if you cannot start your fire on your own listen join with another believer on the home group and that fire will be kindled inside of you it's very practical it's very real right now we're gonna come to a time where we are going to ask the Lord to forgive us of any secret sin I ask you that you become honest with God right now that you become real Holy Spirit can help you. He's not here to condemn you. He's not here to shame you. He's not here to embarrass you. He's not here to pull out your dirty laundry and show it in front of the world. But if you are not going to repent of your sin, the devil will take your secret sins and make it into a public scandal. You don't want to have a scandal. We just want to have repentance. I don't want to get caught. I'd rather confess to the Lord and have the Lord bring healing, restoration and deliverance. Amen. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.